Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about post-production and visual effects on the Venom movie. Uh, but not specifically, what, really what I want to talk about is the four companies that are working on this movie that are listed on IMDb. And I did reach out to all four of these companies. Uh, two of them wrote me back. One of them said they couldn't you know, provide any information. My goal wasn't to try to get any information about Venom from them. I was just stating that, hey, I work on a Venom show. I don't want any NDA agreement broken or anything. I just want to know what services you guys provide so I can maybe help educate my audience of what goes into uh, making a film like this. You know, like I mean, maybe I'll apply it some way to Venom, but really I just want to know what you guys just do in general and what kind of services you offer. And I can understand why I some of these companies and that one company wrote me back and said like, I can't give you anything. Uh, and why the other two maybe didn't either is because a lot of these companies do a lot of things. They don't just do one type of thing. They maybe have things that they specialize in, but but uh, they offer a lot of services for film, TV, and other stuff like, you know, video games and, and you know, uh, what was it? Like, uh, there was a animation, stuff like that. So not just live action, but animation as well. So there's a bunch of stuff to go over here. So I'm going to try to condense the best I can. And I'm going to provide links to each of these companies down below in the description box so you can learn more and, and find things that I don't have time to cover in this video. Otherwise, this video will be like an hour and a half long. So I'm going to try to cut it down as quickly as I can and just talk about these four companies specifically. Uh, but one company did reach back to me, uh, Chris Wright, uh, managing director of Envisage, and he wrote me back and, uh, and gave me a little bit of information about a service they offer with NCAM technology. So we're going to talk about that last uh, and make that the feature of this video since that's the one I know most about. And it was really neat because I used to work in post-production, I worked in movies before, and a lot of this technology is new to me because that was maybe like eight, nine, ten years ago, and this is like all new stuff, a lot of it, and just things that I never would have imagined. So it's cool. I got to learn something and now I want to share it with you guys. Uh, but before we get into those companies, I do want to give a quick mention to a gentleman that you'll see listed in the uh, IMDb page named Brian. Ryan Adler, who is doing visual effects for this movie. I did some research on this guy, and my research showed that he needs his own video. <laughs> kind of like how we did with Matthew Libatique. If you haven't watched that video, he's a cinematographer for this movie, and we talked a little bit about his career and what he might be bringing to the table at, uh, with the Venom movie. So I want to do the same thing with Brian Adler. This guy is very smart, not only business-wise, but creatively. Uh, he has started his own company, used to work at General Giant Studios, started his own company, and has been doing a lot of great stuff. Every company, every production company out there, every uh, you know, house for movies, Warner Brothers, Sony, um, all these studios, they use this guy. He has no you know exclusive agreement to anybody. He just is out there, and he offers even consulting he's even available to be a, a visual effects consultant on movies uh, if you can't afford him full outright he'll at least come consult on your movie which is pretty cool this guy just cares about movies in general he just wants all of them to look great uh, and the best they can especially on a visual effects level so that's pretty cool so he's an awesome dude i'm going to make a separate video about him in like a week or two so keep an eye out for that uh, but for today we're going to talk about these four companies so let's dive right in the first company we're going to talk about is called Pixo Mondo, and this company is really neat. They're international. They are creative designers and visual effects studio. And creative designer is a key thing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but they were founded in 2001 by CEO and executive producer Thilo Kuther. Hopefully I'm not mispronouncing his name. Uh, and they are a solutions-oriented design company that solves creative challenges for their clients and their partners. Uh, their passion is to deliver the best ideas at the highest levels of quality on time and on budget, which is key if you want to keep working in movies and TV uh, with the outstanding service you expect from a world-class company. And they are. All these companies have won multiple awards, have uh, have offices all over the world. They are all international companies, uh, and it's really cool to see. These guys, uh, Pixelmondo, do a lot of stuff. Everything from movies, TV, pre stuff, but they also work um, on this thing right now in China, which is like an interactive movie roller coaster thing. And it made me think of like the, the Transformers ride at Universal, or maybe even the Spider-Man ride, when like uh, uh, Scream jumped on the hood of the car and kind of slashed at you as it, you know, and you're like, oh no, no, and you had the 3D glasses on. It kind of looked like that. It was like a little theater, bunch of people sit in it and think like things are moving around, seats are moving, screen is moving, and, and but they're telling a story on screen and you're like the main character or your group is the characters. And it just looked really neat. So, and they're, I guess they're big in China and they're doing a lot of cool stuff over there. So 
check out Pixel Mondo's site. They do a lot of stuff outside of movies, doing things like that, making their own movies that are interactive. I thought that was really cool. So these guys are cutting edge uh, a company. And the fact that they do creative design, I haven't seen that listed on these other companies' websites. So it makes me wonder if that's maybe their specialty, what they bring to the table on working something like Venom. Because you can see, if you go to IMDb, you'll see they have artists working in previs and other stuff um, on IMDb. But, but Pixel Mondo listing creative design on here and visual effects makes me think, oh, maybe they're somehow involved with the look of Venom in the post process, translating the, you know, the, the uh, storyboards and designs into, you know, reality or something. Uh, makes me wonder if they're doing that. I don't know for sure. I think maybe Double Negative, another company we're going to talk about here soon, might be doing that too. Uh, but anyway, if you want to learn more about Pixel Mondo, link down below, check them out. Uh, we're going to move on now to Argon FX. And Argon Effects is a company that does previs and post visualization uh, for movies. You'll, if you go to their website, again, link down below, you'll see examples of what this means. Um, so basically, you know, when they're previs is like, is uh, I actually have a definition of previs here. It's a collaborative process that generates preliminary vis versions of shots or sequences, uh, predominantly using 3D animation tools in a virtual environment, and enables filmmakers to visually explore creative ideas plan technical solutions, and communicate a shared vision of efficient production. It's it's a money saver and a time saver. Uh, if you're working in pre-viz, you can kind of set up visually what something's going to look like in post-production, so that way they can figure out how to move the camera, where they want to move the camera, what will be in the way, uh, what they want the audience to see, are they capturing everything to give the audience a, a, a nice image. You know, all that kind of stuff comes from working it with pre-viz and post-viz stuff, and, uh, and, and narrowing it down, getting the look of things perfect and this reduces the the chance of uh you know mistakes i guess and so yeah they offer that but they also offer uh, offer motion capture and none of the other companies listed here seem to do motion capture at least that i could find if i'm wrong let me know down in the comments but on their websites i did, i only saw motion capture on argon effects's website so it makes me wonder if maybe they're involved with the motion capture and we know at least some form of motion captures in this movie because uh, michelle williams said in an interview that uh, when they asked her about she venom she was like yeah I'm they didn't put the balls on me, and I didn't have to stare at a green tennis ball, and I, you know, I didn't have to do that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't involved with motion capture in this movie, and so it uh, makes me wonder if Argon is a company that you know has uh, Tom Hardy in a suit with the balls tracking him, you know, tracking his movement, maybe just how light bounces off him in certain scenarios. So when they transform into Venom, you know, they know how to maneuver him, and also to keep the symbiote still moving like him in some way. Uh, but also giving him a chance to act on how he would like the symbiote to move. You know, if he wants ape-like or if he wants, you know, whatever. Um, if he wants to be, like, very sleek. Obviously, he did a lot of uh, kickboxing and cardio for this movie. So, you know, when he's running, he, they want to know how the suit, the Venom costume is going to look while it's running across rooftops and jumping. So, you know, motion capture is very important for that. So I think that's what Argon is going to bring to the table for this film. Next up, we have Double Negative. Double Negative seems like to be... The main company in charge of visual effects. These guys have won, much, much like the other companies have won, uh, awards for what they do. But Double Negative, they won Best Visual Effects for Ex Machina, Interstellar, and Inception. I mean, these guys have worked on some awesome, awesome movies. Uh, Chris Nolan movies, uh, and who was a... Uh, can't remember the gentleman who directed Ex Machina. It was an Alex Garland. I can't remember, uh, but I love that movie. And then so to know that these guys are working on visual effects, they that's their services they offer is film, television, visual effects, and uh, and animation, featured animation. So they those are the three things they specify in, and they have they're one of the world's leading visual effects and animation companies for feature film and television with studios in London, Vancouver, Mumbai, Los Angeles, Chennai, and Montreal. These guys are all over the world and uh, and they offer you know a lot of stuff, like I said, but visual effects seems to be the main thing they focus on, so they could be responsible for cleaning up shots, color correction, uh, just keeping the movie consistent, making sure the tone is consistent, the palette is consistent or manipulated in a way that the director thinks is, you know, most useful. Uh, they are probably very hands-on. They have, a, I think, almost a dozen people and artists working from their company listed in the IMDb from, you know, for the Venom movie. So they seem to be one of the main focuses and main companies that is working on the visual effects for this film. So that, to me, seems pretty obvious since that's one of the only services they offer. But visual effects does cover a lot of ground. So they have people in different departments working on different things, which is neat. So if you want to read about all that stuff, like I said, check out the link down below. Go check out Double Negative and see just all the awesome movies they've worked on. Check out their reels. Check out everything about them. They're pretty awesome. 
Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to talk about Envisage, since these are the people that wrote me back. Chris Wright, again, big shout out to you. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to take a chance on a nobody like me who does this you know, goofy little YouTube show. And out of all these companies, you wrote me back and you gave me something to work with, which I really greatly appreciate. So I want to spend the rest of, the, the rest of this video explaining what NCAM technology is, because that seems to be what they specialize in at Envisage. They do a lot of other stuff, pre-viz, post-viz. Um, you know, Paul Greengrass, has called them uh, his digital nexus and they coined the phrases pitch viz and post viz where uh, you know they were able to come up with that concept basically on how you know envisage works in general uh, and they are gaining a reputation for high quality independent previous services on top tier hollywood films productions for the past 12 years these guys have been around for 12 years now and they're working on some really cool stuff and they've done snow white and the huntsman alice in wonderland and they did like the dark knight um so yeah and quantum of solace so these guys have worked on a bunch of cool stuff and uh, if you want to learn more about envisage go ahead and check out the link down below because we're going to move on now to NCAM technology, which is what Envisage is working on and using. Uh, but this is going to be the rest of the video here is what is NCAM. And I'm going to have some videos playing up while I'm talking about some of this. But N uh, but I'll tell you real quick, NCAM offers a complete and customizable augmented reality platform that enables photorealistic virtual environments in real time. So basically what you're going to see on screen here is imagine yourself in a green room, uh, in a green screen room, right? And there's nothing there. Maybe there's one actor who has to go like, all right, I'm running from vampires. Let's just say vampire or symbiotes in this case. Like, all right, there's three symbiotes attacking me, but you know, we don't have a lot of stunt people here. We don't have the room. We, you know, we, we need this open or I need to move. We need to figure out where the camera is going to go first. Uh, we need to make sure that nothing's blocking everything. And we need to know what the room is going to look like in general. We have this concept concept art, but what are we? What does it look like in, in real life? What does it look like in action? And we can't build this set. So NCAM technology comes in. They set up a bar on your camera. It feeds an image into their software that's, you know, running off the camera into their software at Video Village or whatever, wherever they're looking at stuff. And it's recording the the version they're making and the blank version of just the green screen room. So it's recording the stuff that's added and the stuff that isn't added. So that way when you're in post-production, you can use either or to develop your stuff. And that is a huge time saver in a lot of ways uh, and a huge money saver because if you're saving time, you're saving money and you don't, have to, you don't have to splinter off like three or four artists to go work on something, to redo something. If you have everything you need there, you have the version that's you know started and the version that's empty and ready to go. So this is really cool stuff. And so you're in a green screen room and you move the camera around and your actor's running and you want like three monsters coming down here, but you also want the room to look like an alien spaceship. So on the camera while they're filming it, they can actually see the, you know, a very basic version of the alien spaceship uh, and the monsters jumping around uh, following them, you know, following the character. So the character knows where to look. They know, you know, everything. So it's like, all right, look up here because we're going to have a creature jumping down there. Look over here. There's going to be someone jumping here and then jump over that hole in the floor because we're going to digitally add a hole in the floor. All that is on camera. So that way the director can direct the actor and say, all right, jump now. All right, look left. All right, look right. You know, and then as they're running down the hallway or whatever, even though it's just a green screen room. So they can add stuff like that. And not only that, but the technology has come so far that you can actually manipulate lighting with it too. NCAM technology is used for Monday Night Football, Super Bowl, uh, Age of Ultron. It was used on that movie. I mean, this thing could be applied to almost anything. And that's what makes it so cool and so unique, you know, in a lot of ways. And like I said, they're manipulating lighting as well. Like you, they're aiming at a, like a green screen table with nothing on it but then the camera adds in you know like a, a plant or something and then they can move the camera around and manipulate the light source and show where the light is coming from where the sunlight's coming from if the camera is like all right the camera is the sunlight so we're going to move around and you're going to see it you know change in the background even though there's nothing there in real in reality so i think this is just cool technology it's really awesome and it was really nice of chris wright to tell me about it and tell me that this is what they're working on and this is how they help movies you know stay efficient and when you take this the stuff that they pre-vis, you know, visualize in filming when they're on the set filming this, uh, it's so easy to go, okay, now that we have this, you're, we're posting it, you know, we're putting it into post and we're, the editors are using it. They have both versions of the, the footage. They have the version that we manipulated on set and the version we don't, you, we didn't manipulate, you know, so they have both versions that fed both into the camera and into the recording devices. Uh, so now the editors have both things to work with, which is really helpful, big time saver, big money saver, uh, most importantly. And, uh, and it allows them to just go in and add in those details and work more efficiently. And like I said, it also helps the director and everyone on set visualize the bigger picture 
because a lot of times, you know, it is about the work day. You're just trying to aim the camera the right way and do your best. But to have something like this, to have technology like this to keep the big picture constantly in your head, I'm sure it helps a ton. And it's definitely going to re revolutionize movies the more and more it's used, for sure. And it has already. I mean, this stuff's been around for a while now, and people are using it on everything. Movies, TVs, and it's it's changing a lot of stuff. So I just found this really cool. I wanted to bring this to your guys' attention. So you guys let me know what you think. Check out Envisage. Check out NCAM Tech. I'm going to put links to both of those down below as well. And like I said, we'll talk about Brian Adler and what he might be doing in visual effects later on, because this video has run long enough. And I just, I don't know, I found this all interesting. And one of the things, like I said, I want to do about the show is not just talk about Venom the movie, but what goes into filmmaking as well. And just maybe open some of our eyes as to why movies take so long in post-production, why Venom wasn't finished in time for the last trailer. It's clear because, you know, like, look at, look at what all these people have to do. This is a lot of work. And they're all working really hard right now, possibly to get something ready to show at CinemaCon at the end of April. So those of you who haven't seen our videos in the past who are asking about when the next trailer is coming, our guess is CinemaCon because Sony's having a big presentation on the first day of CinemaCon for an hour and like 45 minutes. They're taking over the stage and they're going to talk about Venom and they're going to talk about other movies coming beyond Venom and that they're working on right now and probably make a few announcements. Probably about Silver and Black, maybe about Nightwatch, you know, Morbius, who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this stuff with you guys, like I said, and bring something new to the table. I know a lot of YouTubers out there don't do stuff like this when they cover movie news, but I just found this really interesting and I thought it was worth talking about. So you guys let me know what you think of all this down below and check out all these companies and websites beautiful stuff they make so go check them out and learn more about them and i'm going to go do that too because there's stuff on these some of these websites i haven't even read yet uh, but i wanted to get this up to you as fast as i could so thank you for being patient with me thanks for waiting for this video i'm glad i finally got it done for you and thanks for watching as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace